So hi guys, I'm back. Thank you for your patience while I was going through some technical difficulties. Uh, let me see if I still have the same people in the class. Yes, we still have the same people in the class. Uh, no new additions. All right, no problem. So as I was saying, we were recapping on language and editing. And I was, I was telling you guys that it's to build your academic vocabulary. I've went through that scan for details and identify specific details as well. Um, make inferences based on given text. So I need you to be able to interpret things, identify main ideas when given a text, because that, that grows you um, academically. Summarize and paraphrase information. That is also the other point of editing. You need to be able to summarize information. Um, because you can't always relay every point of what has been discussed, right? So I'm just going to go quickly through our house rules, and that would be respect all the time. But what I truly appreciate about this class is that we always have respectful and engaging sessions, right? And the group chat is our main source of um, learning. That's how we share our ideas. So I want you guys to be on the group chat. This means that you have to attend class. And on occasions where you can't, perhaps, you know, you may watch the video, but if you guys have been in my class classes consistently, you will understand that um, being in class actually teaches you more. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, though. And the other thing is I want you guys to engage, engage, engage. I love engagement in my classes because that shows me that you're interested. That shows me that you're learning. And the other thing is I want you to learn and I want you to have fun. Don't be scared. Don't be shy about anything. So, yes, those are the house rules. Right. Um, okay. Just moving to the next slide. There we go. So language and editing rules. Okay, so I went through this with you guys yesterday, but I just want to put emphasis on this again because um, I, I, I know that it really works. So this is why I'm just going to put emphasis on it. So my first thing is to always read the given text, to understand it and to get what it's about, right? To grasp concepts, you know, to grasp the main idea, to pick up general mistakes, um, etc. Okay, there's a lot of birds here, so I'm just gonna close my window. Sorry about that, guys. Um, all right, sorry about that. Right back. And so I said that was to grasp main ideas and pick up general mistakes. So while you're reading it the first time, this is when you're going to see if sentences are making sense, if they're structured pro correctly, because as so when I read, I actually have a voice in my mind so that I, I hear what I'm reading, even though I'm reading it silently, right? That helps you because I feel like when you actually read something out and you hear it, you can hear the mistakes. So that really helps. And then you read the questions to know what to look for in the text. And while you're reading the questions, um, some of the answers you already know because you've been reading the text, right? And then um, the last one is to then go back to reading the text again with the questions in mind. If you can, you can underline and then you answer the questions, right? So yesterday we had, um, we had, a, we had an exercise and um, we had an exercise and I know that when class ended, so this is a lesson three recap, when class ended, we hadn't um, gotten all the answers or the correct um, extract of this. So those that were in class yesterday, if you weren't, please just uh, watch the video for lesson three. You'll see the, um, this is the text. This was text A for yesterday. This is what we were working on. And um, the, this is the right, this is the right way to, it was supposed to have been written, right? So I don't know if you guys want to take this, take this down 
uh, you guys have any questions, can you please answer me in the group chat, guys? Um, let's see, we've got a few more people in class. Uh, hi, Dombi. Uh, Priyanka, Ntlantla, Mavuyega, Jared. Okay, cool. Uh, you guys know how much I like um, engagement. So please tell me if you're unfamiliar with this text, but everyone who was in class yesterday got this. And when, I let, when the class was about to end, I told you guys that the first thing we do today is to recap on yesterday's lesson. Uh, luckily, we got most of the answers, but this is the full correct text. So I don't know whether you guys are taking pictures or you guys are actually taking it down. If you have any questions, please, 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 please. So the first question was identify a punctuation error in line A. So there was no question mark and I added a question mark. So that would be your right answer. Does everyone understand what's going on? Like guys, I'm not getting a lot of responses today. So I'm pretty worried. Are we good? Oh, hi, Mavuyega. Hi, Priyanka. Okay, cool. And then, um, and then we have the second question, which is replace the incorrect concord in line with the correct concord. And I explained to you yesterday um, that the con the concord is basically the agreement between the noun and the verb. So what we're going to be doing is. Uh, I'm gonna do more language and editing tomorrow. And on Monday, I wanna go into punctuation and grammar. So that will be like your language, your um, nouns, verbs, concords, um, personification, onomatopoeia, all those things, right? So, okay, for now, let's just focus on reading and understanding language texts, right? Um, so the third question was the spelling mistake was psychologist. Uh, if you were here yesterday, you saw that psychologist was spelled wrong. The fourth question was, um, there's a concord and spelling mistake in line G. So the concord and spelling mistake was the concord was contained instead of contain, which didn't make sense. So remember, the concord has to be the agreement between the noun and the verb, right? And um, the, the, the spelling was for the placebo tablets. I don't know if you saw that that was spelled wrong. And line D, a word was used incorrectly. So instead of it's dict, it was supposed to be is stuck. So did everyone get that? Um, I hope you guys are taking pictures or you're understanding um, what is happening. Hi, Tanta. Hi, Dombi. Oh, we've got more participants. We've got Spe. Hi, Spe. Okay, uh, next one. So are you guys good for lesson three? Now we're like getting into the crux of lesson four. So what I had prepared for today. All right, so we've got a text, right? This is more language than it is editing, okay? So I'm going to read this text and then we're going to do these questions and I'm going to ask more questions on the group. You know how I roll, guys, you know how I roll. Anyways, survival. Oh, don't be, your screen is blank. You don't see anything. Uh, is anyone else experiencing this problem? Does anyone else, does anyone else have a blank, a blank screen? No, ma'am, your screen is displaying correctly. You're on the correct slide at the moment. Survival is a bit an insect way. Pardon? 
I say your screen is displaying. You are currently on okay. the survival. Is but an insect way. Is okay. but an insect okay. away. Okay. Okay. Uh, don't be, I think you might have to sort out your screen because everyone else's is fine. Jared says my screen is fine. Priyanka says hers is fine as well. So I, I was pretty worried about that. Okay. So let's move on to the text. Survival is but an insect away, right? So I'm going to read this text and then I hope you guys are going to be reading with me and uh, we're going to do the questions together and then I'm going to ask more questions from the group as I always do. Cool. So you may think insects are all legs and very little else, but they are not. Just look at how quickly baby birds grow from eating insects. Insects are a very rich source of fat and protein. If you need to survive in the wild, flying insects can be trapped by placing a close tangle of twigs over the hole that the ants are emerging from. Place a bowl under the tangle, but do not close the opening that the, term, that the termites are coming out of. As the flying ants crawl through the twigs, they lose their wings and fall into the bowl. Gently roast the flying ants over the fire or eat them fresh from the ground. You will be amazed at how delicious they are. Flying ants are so rich in fat and they have, and they leave a fatty deposit against the roof of your mouth when you eat them. Okay, so did everyone get that? Did everyone get that? Okay, perfect. So the first question is, what is the aim of the, of the heading? What, what would you guys guess is the aim of the heading after reading the text? Do you guys want to go through the text for one more minute and then um, we grapple these questions together or you're good to go with the questions? So you guys just tell me which. All right. Are you guys reading the text? Okay, cool. You guys are reading. Yes, yes, Priyanka, this is correct. This is correct. This is correct. So the aim of the heading is that um, survival is everything, right? So uh, it's, 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 it's literally to give survival tips. So Priyanka is right by saying you have to do anything to survive. Is there anyone that has a different perspective to this? Okay, so the other one would be that, um, like to, to, to inform people how to survive in the bush. So that would be the other way, right? So yeah, I'm gonna text this. Got 
got it, guys. Okay, so the second question is combine the following sentences using the word and. So insects are very rich in fat. Insects are rich in protein. So anyone willing to try that one? Are you guys trying this one? Okay, let's see. You guys are still here. Perfect. Guys, are you still combining this, these sentences? Okay, this one is right, my Vuega. Insects are very rich in fat and rich in protein. Insects are very rich in fat and in protein. Okay, I have another way. I don't know if other people want to try it before I give you my way. Okay, I am going to answer. Okay, so this is how I would do it. Let me tell you why I would not add a second in. Because if they're rich in fat and protein, if that's the rest of the sentence, then I already know that it's in protein. It's not going to be on protein. Do you get what I mean? So I, I, I personally would write it like this, and this is the correct way. So I don't know if you guys want to take this down. We'll be doing more examples of this next week. Um, I think we really need to focus on language and editing. I, I'm not very confident uh, with it when it comes to you guys, as I was with the visual literacy, but I know that by next week, Tuesday, you guys are probably gonna be great at it to some extent. And if we practice some more, uh, maybe if we get three more lessons on language after a while, you guys will probably be champs. So I don't know, how do you guys feel about the answer? Priyanka agrees. Okay, then we have the next question, which is, this extract was most likely taken from which source? So by which source, when I say source, I mean, which book? Was it a book? Was it a newspaper? Was it a magazine? Was it an encyclopedia? Was it a dictionary? Was it... Um, a letter to the president, a journal article. So yeah, that's what I'm asking. So this extract was most likely taken from which source? Does anyone want to try this one out? I love it when you guys try. Oh, 
of Viega says an article. Okay. Pi says adapted from Outlook. Mavriega, when you say an article, what kind of article? Magazine article or a newspaper article or a journal article? Okay, guys, so the correct answer is, it is from a magazine, um, adapted from a magazine, but I just want to address something here. I understand why you guys think it's from Outlook, right? So when you guys see adapted from Outlook, that is the source I got the article from, right? That is not exactly where the article really comes from, but where I got it from. And as you grow older, I don't know if you guys have started doing uh, referencing, but as you grow older, you'll, you'll learn more about referencing and how I, I can't just put something here and not tell you guys where it's from. You know, that would be like plagiarism or just not acknowledging someone's work in that regard, right? So this is from a magazine, but whenever you see something like adopted for, ad adapted from Outlook or adapted from um, dictionary or adapted from CAPS textbook, uh, you know, then if it says textbook, then you know it's adapted from a, a high school textbook. If it says um, adapted from um, Outlook or What is the other one? I'm trying to think of another thing. Um, Outlook, and then we've got other adaptations such as email, social media is also on the rise in being adaptations these days. So yeah, whenever you see something like that, just always look into the text and see if, if really, you know, and what it really means to adapt something from Outlook. Okay. Glad we moved on from that. So I've got a few questions for the group chat. Um, let me see. Let me see if it's for this exercise. Okay. So. I'm going to text in the group right now. I've got one exercise for this excerpt. You can eat flying and straight from the ground, right? But there's a catch, so wait for the catch. Wait for the catch before you start it. Hmm. 
Okay, got it. Flying ants can. So that's what you're going to start the sentence with, but it needs to have the same meaning. So the sentence is, you can eat, okay, sorry, it's one eat. You can eat flying ants straight from the ground. But don't change the meaning and start it with, okay, so I'm just gonna write the sentence again so that it's correct. There we go. You can eat flying ants straight from the ground. Okay, guys, are we winning? I'm gonna write my answer, but I'm only going to send it. Ah, Thais, this is correct. I was about to write the same thing. So that is correct. Flying ants, yes, Mavuega. Flying ants can be eaten straight from the ground. Correct. Mm, I see his pair is back. Oh, are there two pairs? Oh, there's one pair. Okay. That is correct. That is the correct answer. Everyone can take down that answer. Okay. So we are doing an exercise on this. Okay, so I'm going to read text B, right? So now we're doing editing. I'm going to read text B and we are going to, we are going to go through it together and then we're going to answer some questions in the group chat. All right, so, Text B is as follows. Priyanka, that is correct. Deposit. First payment you make, okay, deposit, noun. Number one, first payment you make when you agree to buy something expensive, such as a house or a car. You've put down a deposit on a new house. Two, a layer of metal that has formed in soil or rock. There are rich gold deposits on the reef. Three, a layer of a substance that forms inside or on something. Layers of fat can be deposited in the arteries. Okay, and then we now have deposit as a verb. One, to put or to leave something somewhere. They deposited their suitcases at the hotel. Two, to pay money into, bank, into a bank account. He deposited money in his account. Three, to lay down or to layer these sediments were deposited by floods. All right, so can you, tell, can you guys tell me where this, this extract was taken from? This is, this is really a trick question because it's right there. But I need you guys to now use what I told you about reading, about, um, about reading um, the adaptation information, like where the information, Perfect, Mavuega. It is adapted from a dictionary. Okay, cool. So the first question is, flying ants are so rich in fat, in fat that they leave a fatty deposit against the roof of their mouth when you eat them. Is the underlined word used as a noun or a verb? So first of all, what do we know about nouns? What is a noun, guys? I know this is great age work, but I, 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 I really like reinforcing things so that we all remember. Anyone knows what a noun is? Anyone wants to remind us what a noun is? Okay. 
guys are you here i like i i'm not seeing any replies nouns nouns do you need my help okay we're gonna run out of time so i'm gonna move right along anyways right so the answer is um okay besides just telling you what a noun is in this text, in, in this sentence, flying ants are so rich and fat that they leave a fatty deposit against the roof of their mouth when you eat them. Is the underlined word used as a noun or a verb? It's a noun, guys. Why is it a noun? Because a, a verb is a doing word. And we know that in this, in, 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 in this context, deposit, like in the context of the sentence, Deposit cannot be a verb. It, it would not make sense because you cannot deposit uh, against the roof of your mouth, of anyone's mouth, actually. Right? So it's a noun. Thank you, Priyanka. Okay, so question two, quote the dictionary definition of, thank you, Priyanka, you are naming something you are doing. Quote the dictionary definition that gives the correct meaning of the word deposit as it is used in the sentence above. Did you guys get that one? Quote the dictionary definition. Okay, guys, so the correct definition would be a layer of substance that forms inside or on something. So I don't know if you guys can actually see my cursor. Let me try and find one. Um, can you guys see my mouse? Okay, perfect, perfect. So this would be, it would be this one. Definitely number three. So this would be the correct one. A layer of a substance that forms inside or on something, right? And then the other question is, why is the word deposit written in bold letters? Okay, so it is because it is the head word, right? So it can show the reader that uh, it can catch the attention of the reader. So if you're looking for a word, it would, it would make sense to have it in bold and the meaning in um, normal font because then you're able to tag it um, quickly, right? Um, so I'm going to give you the answer here. It is the head word and the reader needs to easily 
identify it. All right, so the other thing that editing does, right, it's just also a way to pick on your brain, to see how you think and if you can make solid conclusions that actually make sense. They don't have to be right. So I told you guys this about English. It's all about interpretation, right? You don't have to be right, but you need to make sense all the time. Like I need to see why you're thinking the way you're thinking, right? Okay, so are you guys happy with the answer? Okay, how much time do we have? Just a bit of time. I'm gonna give you one more question. Let us see. Um, what question can I give you? Mm. Okay, so what? is the function of the word okay you know what i think that was enough because we're about to leave so we'll carry on tomorrow on more language and editing in the meantime please uh tell me if you've got any suggestions or um queries, appreciation posts, uh, and we can share that as I always do that towards the end of my classes. I thought we would wrap up language and editing tomorrow, which is why I put it in the slide, but we will not be wrapping it up tomorrow, maybe on Tuesday, because I feel like we need a bit more practice um, on it. And thank you so much, guys, for your cooperation, for your participation, and just your overall general respect for me. I love it, guys. I think we are a, a winning team. We work well together. I hope you guys also feel the same way. So thank you so much. I really appreciate you coming. Yeah. Okay. So if anyone has anything to say, We've got one minute remaining. Okay, we will do Shakespeare next week. Let's say next week, Wednesday. Let's finish with language and editing and then next week, Wednesday, we can go into literature. Uh, yeah, we can go into literature and I actually enjoyed literature. So we're going to have a lot of fun because I'm also a writer. So that, that just, you know, makes it easier for me to understand, um, academic texts. So I really think we're going to have fun with that. I'm going to prepare some, um, notes and I'm also just going to, what book are you guys currently reading? If you guys can just tell me that. Or if this class ends before you can tell me, we will, you guys can tell me tomorrow. I'll remember to ask you tomorrow. Let me actually write it down. So what set books are you guys reading? Macbeth. Okay. Things Fall Apart. I love that book. So Things Fall Apart. Macbeth. I think I also read Macbeth, guys. So this is going to be really fun. Um, Macbeth. Um, plain Truth. Okay, I'm going to look up Plain Truth, but it looks familiar. I'm going to look it up and see if I can uh, get the main idea around the books. So you know what? Every book. Is Harry Potter like a, a set book? Like, are you guys reading it in school? Okay, so which Harry Potter? Because I know they have different, um, they have different Harry Potter five. Okay, I'm gonna look that up as well. So, Totsi, okay, guys, we have to go. We'll discuss this tomorrow. First thing, we'll discuss which book we're doing first. Bye, guys, had a great time. Um, perfect, bye.